Integration in extension 2. Integration in extension 2 is just like integration in extension 1, but you learn new techniques, right? And so therefore, you take a, you, you sort of have this much broader range of integrals that you can then handle. Because you know how to do more stuff, it's like getting more tools in your toolbox, you're like, cool, I can, I can solve more problems now. Okay? Volumes are much the same. Four unit volumes are just like three and two unit volumes, but we learn new ways with fancy cool new names um, that allow us to tackle a wider range of kinds of problems. Okay? So in order to sort of uh, introduce us into this, let's just start with what you already know about volumes. And I reckon, excuse me, I hate it when sneezes don't come. Um, let's, uh, let's write down, I reckon you could consolidate everything you know about volumes from two and three unit into a single line. What do you think it would be? I'll start you with this. We're talking about volumes in two unit and three unit, right? We're not talking about like the volume of a, of a rectangular prism or something like that. We're thinking about volumes in relation to integration, right? What kinds of volumes do we tend to think about? Come on, guys. Two unit and three unit, you learn about volumes straight after integration, right? What kinds of volumes do you learn about? You learn about solids of revolution, don't you? Round things, right? Uh, Potter's wheel and it goes around and around and you get a shape, okay? So because they're round things, that's why you start with a pi, right? And then what follows after that? An integral? Usually the integral has some kind of boundaries because you're interested in a particular volume. What's the integrand? It's y squared dx, right? And I suppose you could just as equally say x squared dy, and then you would be, well, what would the difference be? Different axis. Different axis. So this is, this is horizontal <laughs> axis, right? And if I did x squared dy, it would be the vertical axis. No problems, okay? My question to you, right, is what does this actually mean? Why does this, like... I, this is one of my favorites for um, sorts of equations to pull out to confuse junior students when I say, look, this is where, you know, uh, if you do a calculus course, this is where it's going. And people are like, what is that? Is that even maths? Like, there are no numbers there. Or there's, there's that number, you know. What does it mean? We've, we're, we've become so good at it that um, you, can, you can just go through the motions and not actually understand what it's talking about. So what is this thing? What's it referring to? To help you... Um, I want to think about it like this, okay? If I gave you a function, okay, here's a function, right? Now we learn an algebraic process, right? And we call it differentiation, which gives you this result, namely 2x, good, okay? Now this is an algebraic process going from here to here, but geometrically it represents something, right? It's not just I'm moving numbers around and multiplying, dividing, etc. right? Geometrically, what does it mean? What have you done? What, when we went from here to here, what have you got now? Gradient. You've got gradient, don't you? Gradient. <laughs> gradient is the geometric hmm, meaning of this algebraic process. Does that make sense? Hmm. So my question is the same here, right? What's the geometric meaning? of this algebraic process. I'm going to try and break it down for you and hopefully it will start to make a little more sense. Okay? Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to stick that pi inside because really, he's supposed to be inside there. Why do we take him out? Just out of curiosity. Why do we take the pi out? Because it's constant and it doesn't actually affect the process of integration. Right? So that's why we take him out. But he really actually comes from in here. Okay? Alright, great. That's fine. My next question is, what is this? What is dx? Well, you can answer this in a variety of different ways, some better than others. What, what's, an, what's a single answer you could give me? It's a, people are holding up things. It's a, it's a width, isn't it? Right? Uh, it's the width of, what's the width of? Hmm. We actually define dx. Um, dx is actually equal to not just a, a width, Right? It's actually an infinitesimally small number. And that's what the d is about. It's a slight change 
in x horizontally. Okay. So in terms of limits, we can say this like this. Right? Think about this, right? Uh, go back to first principles. First principle says this. Can you recite it for me? Limit. Limit. H approaches 0 of? Fx plus H. Minus Fx. All over H. Okay, look, look. Dy. Right? Rise. That's this thing as you take the limit as H approaches 0. Right? That's dy. Well, dx is this bit down the bottom. It's h as h approaches 0. Okay? That's this small, ever-increasing thing. Okay? So let me try and take that and bring that into here. Okay? I'm going to write it like so. If I go back to this limit notation, I can't use an integral anymore. Okay? What I really mean is it's a sum of a bunch of things. Right? I'm going to go from this, um, these boundaries here even though we didn't have any variable attached to them. We assume they're x variables, right? Because we're with respect to x, right? So I go from x equals a to b. I'm going to add up all of these things. What am I adding up? I'm adding pi y squared, and it's h, but with a limit on it. Hmm. Hmm. That's a bit weird, and it's a little hard to see as well. So what I'm going to do is... If you add up a series of things, and this thing is getting increasingly smaller, okay, I can think about this limit at the front, right? Just like the limit of this over this is the limit of the whole thing. Okay? So I'm going to write the limit notation out at the beginning, like so. Okay. Now, have we done enough twisting and turning that the geometric meaning of this algebraic process is clear? What is this shape? We know what this shape is. This is a cylinder, right? Because these are dimensions. All we need to do is to say, you know, let's call this R. There you go. There's my cylinder. Okay. So what we're saying is, How did we get this volume? What was the geometric meaning? The geometric meaning is what we've got is a, an infinite number of infinitesimally thin cylinders. Right? And cylinders are 3D shapes. They have volume. And so if you put them all together, you get the total. Does that make sense? Hmm. OK. Now, here's the thing. Let's actually draw one, because this will um, help us to understand what's going on. OK. Uh, why don't we draw, for instance, oh no, let's do x squared plus 1. What does that look like? We'll just do it um, in the first quadrant. Okay. There's x squared plus 1. Now, if I rotate this around the x-axis, let's choose some boundaries as well. I don't know. Let's go from 0 to 4. Something like that will do. Okay. Now, if I'm going around the x-axis, this is the kind of shape I'm going to get. There you go, right? Now, where is this in here? Where is it? Well, there's an infinite number of them, right? So I don't really want to draw all of them because then they'll sort of cloud each other. But if I just take out one, just take one. So for something like this. Uh, there you go. There's a cylinder in there, right? That radius, that radius there, radius of this cylinder looking at it sideways, okay? Its radius is x squared plus 1, wherever x is, okay? So its radius is y. That's why you've got pi y squared there rather than pi r squared, okay? I suppose we should really say r is just a function of x, okay? Where's h? h is this. That's why you're doing that with your fingers, right? That's that tiny little width there, okay? Now, <clears throat> This is a cylinder, okay? How do we get this cylinder? And what do the rest of the cylinders look like, okay? Um, I actually showed you a model of this before, right? If I drew all the rest of them, the effect is kind of like turning this, um, this weird kind of parabola shape, turning it into like salami, right? We're cutting it up into lots of, well, when you've got lots of salami or ham or any other kind of food you get from a deli, what do you call it? A slice. That's what we're doing, isn't it? 
we're cutting this, we're slicing it. Importantly, and this is, imp um, this is vital for you to write down. We are forming slices, or we're slicing across this volume, a circular volume, but in order to get cylinders out, right, which way do you slice it? Because you can slice things in lots of different ways, right? We are slicing in a very particular way. How could you describe the direction? Hmm. It's going to have to do with the axis of rotation, right? Because, don't draw this one, but if I had rotated the other way, uh, there's x squared, and gone this way. In order to get, get those same cylindrical slices, I'm not going to cut that way, right? I'm going to cut this way, and then you would get a slice, like so, okay? So I think I heard it, right? We are slicing across the volume, perpendicular to um, and it's the axis of rotation that we've been referring to in this case it was the x-axis which is why your slices line up along the y-axis parallel to the y-axis right? 